Hello, you wonderful people, and welcome to another episode of Not Too Comic Book. This being a show, I talk about TV shows that are adaptations of comic books. For today's episode, I'm going to talk about the season finale of Hawkeye. A great season finale. A lot of really interesting things went down in this episode, so let's break it down. Well, first and foremost, we have that opening between Eleanor and Fisk. You know, it's like, ah, just opening shot of the show just gets to walk in and you know I'll see Eleanor's like right I've enjoyed our relationship I mean and it also answers a question I thought was interesting whether or not Eleanor actually went to Fisk for help it seems like no it's like her husband owed him money and she kind of got dragged into this and you know once Fisk has you he kind of doesn't let you go but also Eleanor he also mentions like right you are it wasn't just you paying me back tenfold you also made a hefty profit from this and the only reason why you're having an issue with our relationship now is because the only reason why you have an issue with it now is because your daughter's getting dragged into it but he's like I didn't tell I didn't tell your daughter to get mixed up in this it's just it's come a little too close it's hitting a little too close to home so now she's willing to end this all she's even saying like right I will end this partnership here I do have evidence you know I have an insurance policy and Fesca's is like you might want to take a minute not to and she just walked away she's like yeah we're done so all of this was recorded by Yelena and sent to them. And obviously for Kate, it's just like finding out not only is your mom working with a really bad guy like Wilson Fisk, she's also the one who killed Armand. So that sucks. It's like your mom's not only a, a bad guy, she's an extra bad guy because she's actually killed someone too. And obviously Clint knows like this is a lot for her because she wants to call her mom. But like Clint's like, maybe you should calm down because she wants to at least talk, talk to her about all of this. Um... Obviously, Yelena being the one that sent this, it's like, we have to decide what we're going to do. We have to end this ourselves. Uh, because obviously, like, in this moment, like, all the threads, I, I'm curious in the long run how people are going to feel. Because I think the threads are open enough for other stuff to, like, play out. Because it's, it's not, like, 100% resolved in certain regards. But, like, obviously, they set up the whole Maya thing when she's telling, like, Fisk, like, yeah, I'm, I'm letting this whole thing go. I've been chasing ghosts. And he's like, okay. And so... She walks away from this whole thing, but, you know, it's like, oh, I love you. And she's like, oh, I love you. And just kind of walks away. And he's kind of smiling on his face and he's telling Kazi, like, right, not only do we have the Ronin situation to worry about, we've also got an Avenger up in my business now. Uh, there's the whole Eleanor thing and now Maya. So it's like, right, he know. I guess because she asked Kazi, which I think last episode, I couldn't remember his name. I was like, was his name Ivan or something? It's like, no, I, I was completely off the mark, Kazi, but... Um, but I think Kazi probably told him about Maya's suspicions because she, she probably had never really asked too much about that night. Now she's asking questions, so he probably reported to Fisk like, yeah, she's asking too many questions. So it's like, right, we need to set all this. It's like, right, you claim to love her, but now it's like, right, she's becoming a nuisance. Now it's like, right, you know too much and fact of the matter is you might try and come after me, so I got to put you down. Once again, you're also the reason why things kind of blew up in the way that they did. Because I'm sure like... Well, Fisk has probably had his ear to the ground hearing about all this public stuff anyway, but Kazi was reporting to him anyway about all Maya's movements regardless. I'm, I'm sure that's where that comes into play, but... Clint does kind of give uh, Kate a little bit more to focus on, like with the, all right, let's go make some trick errors. She's like, wait, you can make some? And it's like, yeah. I think, that, I think this is the first time we've ever seen... Clint ever work on his arrows because even like you know I know it's DC but Archer to Archer I'm like I don't think we ever saw Oliver work on his arrows did we like the few like trick arrows he had like I don't think that ever came up but uh yeah seeing them put together I even love that she has them labeled and stuff like that like right we don't want to get them too confused like this is the really dangerous this is the one that's too dangerous uh this is the airbag one the sonic one the um icebreaker um we saw a few of those, so, and just seeing them work on, we saw the Pam Arrow again, so, but obviously, it's like, we're going to this, uh, this gala, well, that big party, so, it, right, we're also gonna have to bring, bring the squad, so, we see, um, some of the LARPers act as kind of their, uh, backup, it's like, alright, so, uh, who, who are our threats, and she's like, oh, I see Gary, the, go, the guy who fired me from the one job I had. I was like, I, I love that we brought that back full circle with this episode. Uh, but also, it's like, right, we got assets all around. So, um, blending in with the party and trying to find Eleanor, which she shows up. But she isn't the only one. Yelena, 
uh, strolls on in too. I like that Kate does, uh, you know, she does actually talk to him. Oh, also Jack being there really quickly. I love it. It's like, oh, Jack, and he brought here, he came here with a sword. I thought he got arrested. After be, after getting released from being arrested for potentially murdering someone with a sword, he shows up at a sword. I guess it's like to show people he has nothing to hide, that he's not guilty. Uh, and I love that little kid runs up to him. He's like, oh, like your wine collection. He's like, oh, you're not even old enough to enjoy my wine collection. He's like, I will be someday. He's like, yeah, but by then it will have like, you know, uh, been past its peak or something like that. He's like, well, I'll get it the moment you get arrested again. He's like, uh, when you piss your pants in that thing or whatever. He's like, yeah, I remember it. Everyone does. I was like, yo, that little snot-nosed brat. Um, he's like, oh, do you know who my dad is or whatever? But I love that... Um, you know, Kate has her confrontation with her mom, like, I know what you did, and she's like, right, everything, you know, it's it's not that simple, like, honey, but it's just like, yo, you, you're, you're mixed up with a really, really bad guy, and she's like, right, stay here, mom, and stay out of it, which I think is, I think it's kind of a nice inverse from, like, the entire time her mom is telling her to stay out of this, but now it's like, right, were you 100% telling me to stay out of it because you care about me, or was it more so, no, you just didn't want me to find out about what you really were up to? Because I think she'd even said it to herself, like, on some level, she's like, maybe I kind of knew and I just kind of ignored it. You know, I, I didn't want to see that side of my mom. Because um, she actually, um, I'd actually, uh, did, I skipped over a little bit. She actually talked about, like, how Clint inspired her. Because she was like, right, she was so, because when the Shatari attacked, she was alone. Her dad wasn't there, her mom wasn't there. But seeing Clint... You are just one person. You don't have any powers. You can't shoot lasers out of your hands. You're just a regular guy. And the fact is, you jumped off that building, no fear. The fact is that you can do that. You're just a regular person. That It showed me that, like, I can be too. Like, anyone can be a hero. Like, you don't have to have superpowers to do it, so. Because I think this is Clint's first time hearing about, like, why he's so important to her. Like, why he's, like, her hero and why she idolizes him. I'm like, yeah, like, you, you, why you meant meant so much to her like what you represent that you know that yes at the end of the day you are just a regular guy and that's the most important thing to this situation obviously you got like uh kazi taking some snipe shots you have the track suits getting into position clint's going up they're like well dealing with trying to take care of uh kazi and I love that uh, Kate and Yelena run into it. It's like, oh, okay, hey. I did to, you know, it's like, the, I once again love their back and forth. And just like, yeah, oh, out of all the 65 floors, you think you're going to be able to find Clint? And she looks and it's like, oh, he's on the 12th floor. And she's like, damn. And then she's trying to get on. And then like, Yelena's like, no, Kate Bishop. And then she sneaks aboard. And I love every time she's trying to press the other buttons, like Yelena slaps her hand away like she's some child or something. And every time she tries to go for it, Yelena's doing all this to kind of get her out of the way. I love it so much. Um... But ultimately ends up pressing all the buttons. She's like, oh my god, that's so annoying. Fine. Because I also love that when she ends up like, uh, her suit is underneath the dress and it's like, oh, did you plan that? And she's like, yes, of course I did. She's like, no, I didn't. But then just like, Elena's just getting annoyed and just getting off and, um, them, their back and forth are just kind of like, hey, come on, you don't have to do this. Like, come on, let's go get a drink. And she's like, okay. After I kill Clint Barton, it's just like, no. Kick to the ribs and everything. Uh, at one point, she was trying to throw something out the window, but uh, Kate, like, hit her hand, and she was like, ow, that really hurt. She's like, yeah. It's like, well, like, the kick to the ribs. It's like, yeah, it was a really good kick, but, like, you doing your thing, too. It's like, yeah. I love that guy who was, like, working in the office, just like, okay, I'm not going to get mixed up in this. I'm just going to still be here working while you guys do whatever you're doing. Um, I even love the whole thing where Kate was like, stop making me like you so much. She's like, I, I can't help it. It's like, you can't. You can't, can you, Florence Pugh? Ah. Uh, uh, but I, I really like that dope topic of, like, alright, she's jumping out the window again, but, like, she's, like, like running down the side of the building because she knows where Clint is. She, uh, turning, like, back around, like, as she was going down to shoot up at him. That was pretty sick. And Kate pseudo-ziplining her way down, which, um... Uh, on the ground, taking out some tracksuits, which I love that she runs into home dude again. He's like, hey, I just wanted to say thank you. And it's like, oh, he's like, I talked to my girlfriend like you suggested. It's like, oh, really? It's like, yeah. So we're going to actually go see Maroon 5. And she's like, oh, man, that's so awesome. It's like, but what's with the gun in the face? He's like, uh, sorry, you know, I just had to. He's like, but I wanted to thank you. Um, but it wasn't just her. Your boy Jack shows up. Because I love that he was like, huh, feels like I'm missing something. I I love that Jack's just in the background. And he pulls out his, and he's doing his thing. This, you know. 
And she's like, yeah, sorry about, you know, kind of doubting you and kind of helping you get arrested and stuff like that, which he's like, he's helping out, which I love, like, the LARPers show up, like, Grills and the others are like, oh, you know, because like, I get him one to safety. It's like, what about him? It's like, I mean, he, he's helping us, but you probably want to get him out of here, too. Kazi's actually a better fighter than I would have expected him to be, but I guess it's also, once again, like, Clint can be good hand-to-hand -hand combat wise but it's not his forte like obviously like his arrows is his main forte but the fact is that um he went toe-to-toe -to -toe a lot better to, with clint than i thought he would have i guess he isn't just like the lowly grunt he's at least top tier grunt so i guess that's what they were kind of showcasing I'm also curious what's up with, like, this whole thing with Jeremy Renner and animals. Just because, like, if you haven't, if you're not watching Mayor of Kingstown, there's a whole thing between him and a bear. And now, like, him in this owl situation when, like, he tried to, like, get out of, like, the, the window, like, kind of zip line away. And it ended up snapping and he fell and luckily landed in the tree and saw the owl. And it's like, oh, hey, he's just like, cool. And so it's like, right, uh, the LARPers are like, yeah, we got to get to business. And so they suit up as well. And uh, they're, they're putting in some work on the ground, too, while they're leading people away. And I love that, like, um, Clint's happy and everything. He's like, oh, we're all going to die. Um, and I love that uh, Kate ends up being the one that kind of knocks the tree down. He's like, please don't do anything crazy. He's like, please. And she ends up, like, knocking down a tree. I'm like, are you just, we're just going to casually just let you do that? And that's not going to be an issue. I guess it's like, eh, it's Avengers like, it was a, an Avenger situation that was going on, so, you know, there, there's going to be property damage in the process, so we're just going to leave it at that. Um, I do like that Clint was wearing the suit, and she's like, oh my god, you, you wore your suit? And he's like, yes, yes, let's, let, let's not worry about that right now. It's like, alright, there's a whole bunch of track suits, and uh, obviously every trick arrow they, like, made, we see them utilize. Like, once I saw the airbag, at first I was like, airbag, what is that? And we see it in action, I'm like, alright, I wasn't, I'm, I'm not really sure what I expected, but it's like, right, the sonic arrow, the magnetic arrow was pretty damn dope, especially, like, how it hit everything and was electrifying and magnetizing their guns so they couldn't get, I was like, oh, that's a good way to, like, get around, like, all of them, like, coming locked and loaded. Um, Kate actually did this really sick trick at one point in time, like, she kind of used her arrow to kind of bend and, like, flip herself up on top of him, uh, on top of a guy with her legs around his head and then, like, toss him, I was like, that was a really sick freaking movement, like, I was like, holy shit, that was sick. I also love that situation where, uh, Clint at one point, um, I love that he ended up using the, um, like, that arrow that split, and, like, Kazi ended up catching one of them. He was like, oh, nice shot, and, like, Clint's like, yeah, I know. Um, but also, like, he had to deal with the whole Maya thing, because she was packing up her stuff and leaving, but she wanted to come to Kazi one last time. It's like, right, let's just, like, leave, and he was like, this wasn't meant to be your life, this is supposed to be mine. I guess maybe because, because I'm curious, we never really got into it too much, and maybe we will in her own series, but... I'm wondering, did Echo stick around because she never got mixed up in her father's business with, like, this whole Fisk thing? It might have just been, like, she only got involved after Ronan killed her dad, and that's when she joined all this. Because he says, like, right, this was never supposed to be your life. This is supposed to be mine. You can't walk in both worlds. I don't, I'm curious, like, how long has she been walking in both worlds? Or was it a situation where... Was it a situation where... Um, because it, it seems like it wasn't just a friendship, it seems like there was a lot more there, and it's like, this was always supposed to be my life, it was never supposed to be yours, you should have just walked away, now, I don't know if that's in the Ronin situation, well, I think it's a combination of the Ronin thing, but also this, it's like, you can't stay here, because Fisk will find you, and he will never stop hunting you, and so she wants Kazi to walk away, but for him, it's like, yeah, my choice has already been made. Like, you have to leave. Now, whether he's straight up dead, she did stab him with an arrow. Granted, could have punctured an organ in the process, but he might be dead, but he at least told her, like, just to get out of there, so. I mean, let's not forget, despite everything, there is still the situation of, regardless of what happened, Clint did kill your um, dad, but also it's like, what hurts most is knowing that Fisk ordered it, gave the co-sign, even set the whole thing up. So that, But also, Clint made it clear. You come after me and my family, I'll kill you. Once again, 
he's trying to make sure everyone walked away from this situation alive. That was kind of my justification. I know some people, I, I thought it was kind of an interesting conversation where some people were saying, like, they were talking about it on the MCU crew that they didn't think, um, my, uh, she's not really a threat. Like, she's not, and I don't think she's meant to be. I think she's just like, no, like, she's a woman out for revenge. And I think Clint is just trying to threaten her because he, that was the whole point of him going to Kazi in the first place is like, get her to walk away from this. Because if she doesn't, the big guy will kill her. So it's like him trying to make sure it's like, right, I'm the reason why you're down this path anyway, so I'm trying to take some responsibility. So yes, I'm threatening you because yes, you know my family and you are mob connected, so it is a thing of you could always come after me, so it is to threaten you, but it's also about playing the role of the bad guy. Like, you know, she is kind of a grunt level person. Yes, she's a skilled fighter, but she's still grunt level. It's not like she's the big, big bad. She just works with the big bad and it's just like, I don't want you coming after my family because if you, you know, it's like, let's end this. We are both people who who let our anger point us in a certain direction. You know, we let people point us in a certain direction. I got pointed towards your dad because of Kazi, because of your boss, so. To be fair, in retrospect, Kazi never showed up, sure, but they never clarified that he actually was the informant. That Because Clint never brought it up of like, oh yeah, this is on you. But I mean, maybe that's why he went to Kazi because it's like, right, we both know you're the reason why Maya is. He never said that, but it could, maybe it's kind of supposed to be implied. Or maybe it is that someone else was the informant and it wasn't Kazi. Kazi was just told not to show up that night because it's like, right, you're going to be um, potentially taking over things. Um you're going to be potentially taking over things after, like, this is all said and done, even though you're his number two. We, I guess it's just a thing of, like, you really need a reason for Fist to kill him. It's like, right, you weren't up to his, uh, maybe uh, he wanted out and Fisk, you know, so maybe we'll dive into that more, you know, once again in Echo Show. So, but, like, obviously, like, well, let's get through, uh, through it. Like, obviously, you have Clint versus Elena. And uh, despite what Clinton said, like, he knows, like, because she's like, right, I want to ask one question, like, what happened? He's like, if I told you, you wouldn't believe me. It is a crazy situation because it's like, right, us fighting together, like, over, like, if I was to say, like, yeah, she sacrificed herself for a stone that was used to basically snap half the universe back. So it's like, you're not going to believe me if I tell you that. And so it's like, right, your sister, all he just says is your sister sacrificed herself. And she was like, you're lying. And Yelena kind of goes all in on him. And, like, Clint defends himself a little bit, but he doesn't really fight back, like, to his full extent, you know? Because he, he's not trying to hurt her because he knows about Yelena. And it's just like, stop lying. Like, why would my sister sacrifice herself for you? And he was like, um, she was better than you. Like, um, kind of almost like he wasn't worth it. And he was like, I know. It's like, she was better than me. Um... I fought her, but she was better. And Yelena's like, well, you should have tried harder, you know? Um, which is actually kind of a sad thing when you think about it in the grand scheme. Like, that, he already carries that guilt. He thinks about it every day. Like, he's stuck with, like, I should have done more, you know? But at the end of the day, uh, Natasha was better at, you know, better than me. She always, she always was, you know? But uh, when the time comes, like, he does their secret whistle, and she's like, how do you know that? It's like, Natasha talking to me, and it's like, she told me all about you, and it's like, what? That you were separated as kids? And for her, for him, it was a situation of, she didn't just do it for me. She didn't say, she did it for everyone, you included, you know? You were always on her mind. She loved you so much. And I, I love that Yelena kind of admits, like, why she was so pissed at Clint. Because it's like, you got to you got to spend your life with her. I only just got that that time in uh, 2017 slash 2018 of, like, after Civil War and the, and the entirety of events of Black Widow. That's the only time I had with her. And when, by the time I came back, I was gone because of the snap. By the time I came back, she was gone. You had, like, there was a bit of jealousy there where it's like, you had time with her. I didn't, you know? You, and even Clint realizes, like, that's the sad aspect of it. And it's just like, and he, you know, Yelena's like, I loved her. And Clint's like, me too. And so Yelena just kind of lets it go. Because I think she just needed the answer and she needed to hear that from him. Because it's like, right, like, if, if Natasha trusted you enough to let you know about something between us, then it's like, you, you know, my sister isn't a bad judge of character. Like, I trust if my t sister 
gave that to you, I'll believe you. And I can see the pain in your eyes. Like, you're just as much heartbroken. You know, it's like, right, we both have to find a way to move forward with, like, her loss. Like, he's obviously, like, a lot of the show, it's him still suffering PTSD from it. Like, he, his best friend is gone, you know? The one person in this world, like, he really connected through, like, because of their, their ledgers, their past, the mistakes they've made, stuff that they can't erase, but they were doing their best to fight for and um, make up for. So, Elena does walk away. Now, the question is, how did this play into Valentina? Because Valentina's the one that at least sent Clint, sent her Clint's way. So, I want, because she could be like, Valentina, she'll probably go, because she's probably is wor still working for Valentina, because it probably plays into, like, the whole notion of, like, Anna, it's like, oh, yeah, I'm doing, uh, we brought it up last episode, where it was like, oh, she's doing certain, uh, she's probably doing, like, mercenary work with Valentina, uh, so she's probably working with, um, uh, U.S. agent, probably, so, who knows who else is on that squad, but, I'm sure she's just going to go back. Like, the thing is, though, she's probably going to be a little upset that Valentina pointed her in a direction. I mean, granted, Ele the moment Eleanor probably put it out there, like, I want someone to take care, care of Clint Barton, probably, like, Yelena probably saw that as an opportunity. Like, oh, I'm going to jump on it. Like, oh, I'm being presented this opportunity. Because Valentina probably was like, right, you want, you want to be able to go after him, but also I want you to take this job. I I'm curious about those conversations. I'm curious what we get any, like, context for how that whole thing worked out. Because Valentina continues just to be in the background, so we haven't really... Because once again, like, her most recent thing, timeline-wise, is the whole... Si well, because she was supposed to pop up in the Black Widow movie first before she made her appearance in Falcon and Winter Soldier. So I would assume, like, timeline-wise... um. The scene with Yelena happened first, and then she recruited um, U.S. agent John Walker. But at the same time, all this is going down. Like, Eleanor's trying to get away, but, oh, your boy Fisk is like, oh, you're not going anywhere. And Kate, like, shoots him with an arrow, but he just, he takes the arrow. She's almost like, what? I guess it's because, I, I'm, I'm assuming without them really going into it, it's supposed to be kind of indicative of, it's like, he's probably wearing a lot of the same material from like daredevil the specialized suits and so they also hint to him almost having like some superhuman strength because he ripped that door off the um handle so it's like twisting his once again like they leaving it so open-ended that you they like we can make this whatever we want to because it's not exactly the um kingpin from daredevil but it is like a version of it once again this might be like a variant type of situation um going on but it, they did display that he has superhuman strength especially the way he was knocking people around he tanked getting hit by a car and got back up and just the way he was tossing kate around like she was nothing he was just like all right kid you're getting annoying um snapped her out arrows in half and stuff like that but no matter how much like he was like punching and like knocking her around um I like that she took one of his cufflinks, flicked it, and it exploded. Like the like the the chain events of like the arrows exploding. I thought that was pretty dope. But also, so it's like, oh, he's not. I was like, they're not going to kill him in that situation. So it seemed like, oh, he's knocked down. We even see later on the cops try to look for him. He's gone. We'll circle back to the kingpin situation. But obviously for Kate. It, you know, she had that conversation earlier with Clint, like the thing about being a hero, it can be a lonely situation and sometimes it means making sacrifices. Um, but that was the whole point for Kate when she was talking about how much Clint meant her, like what him being a hero meant her. So she's like, yes, I am ready for this. But like for um, Eleanor, it's like, right, you have no idea, like um, you think you could go throughout life without consequences because it's like, right, like I've taken care of you your entire life. Like, what are you going to do without my influence and stuff like that? You've never really had to live your life. Like, I've always been there to be your buffer. Like, I'm protecting you from the ugliness of the world. Like, me working with Fisk, me killing Armand, framing Jack, sending, hiring an assassin to kill Clint. This is the dirty side of how this world works. And it's like, you know, she has her own mother arrested because it's like, right, like, you are a bad guy. You need to be, like, you need to be removed from the equation, like, you know, so. The question then becomes, like, what happens to uh, Eleanor's company? I'm assuming, like, it gets shut down, not unless someone else swoops in. Oh, to be fair, it is Kate, so it does fall on her shoulders, but the question is, like, what does she do? Does she keep running a business? Like, what does she know about running a security business like that, you know? 
So that's kind of left open. Uh, but then we have the fist situation with Maya rolling up on him. And it's like, right, you know, you know, sometimes we haven't seen eye to eye. They pull away from it, but we hear the pow and the thud. So you're like, wow. Which immediately I was like, I'm curious how people are going to feel about that. I could definitely see that pissing some people off that you did that. You brought him into the show just to kill him. But I think the argument could be he's already had, like, what are we going to do that it wasn't already done in the Netflix stuff necessarily? I mean, because I know people, like, I, I myself wanted it, like, wanted him in this universe. Because if he's in this universe, like, that also means crossing paths with Peter Parker at some point in time. I mean, that was my... Because he is initially a... Spider-Man villain, like, he actually popped up, I believe, like, wasn't it, like, ain't it, like, 130-something? I, I I feel like the, no, the number was, like, 130-something, 130, it, I might be completely off, but I want to say it was, like, the Amazing Spider-Man comics is when, like, he first popped up, so he was initially, obviously, he coincides with Daredevil and stuff like that, sure, but he's he was first introduced as a Spider-Man villain, I believe, if I'm remembering correctly, so I've always known him to be a Spider-Man villain, like, he, you know, the animated series from the 90s, like, Fisk and that, but... That's where it seemed like we were deaf. Because in, in the Daredevil show, he never seemed like he had superhuman strength. That's why it feels like they were going a little more comic accurate of like why he's such a threat. Because he's a, he's, a, he's a unit. He's a, he ain't the big guy for just nothing. Like He hits hard. Uh, I am curious about what Clint's experience is with him. Obviously, mm, other things in the MCU kind of canonize certain other aspects so that's why I'm like there must be certain things about Daredevil that without getting explicit while leaving it open enough for themselves it's like yeah his arc has already happened in this universe so we're removing him from the equation like I said I'm just curious how people are going to feel about it because like oh he's finally in the MCU proper and you kill him in his first full-blown appearance in the in, in, in its entirety in, in technically the MCU once again that out that depends on whether they are retroactively canonizing how much of Daredevil on Netflix they're canonizing it is what that comes down to. The question is, though, we did hear the thud, and we had to cut away, so obviously it's Disney, like, they're not going to show him getting glocked, but it could be Maya didn't kill him. Once again, like, that's a super open thread of, like, well, what's her show going to be about? Is she going to be... Because she... Kazi talked about her not being able to walk in both worlds. Is that going to be part of her show? Walking in both worlds, the criminal world. Will she be taking over the Enterprise? Like, will she be trying to dismantle it? Like, did she actually kill Fisk? Like, it sounds like they added a they added a thud, so it sounds like he is dead. But like I said, I don't think people are going to be too happy about that. But like I said, the argument could be he's already kind of had his arc. Matt didn't put him down. It was only a matter of time before someone actually did. I don't know if she, because I know, like, this whole thing of, like, right, Fisk being responsible for her father's death is apparently from the comics. So I'm curious, um, is that them just being even more, a little more parallel to the comics in that regard of, like, I don't know if she killed him in the comics. I know, like, they've had their confrontation, but I don't know if she actually killed him. Maybe we'll kind of get a little more, like, clarity on that with the Echo Show, whatever that ends up being, because I'm assuming it is going to be post this. So I'm curious, like, what's next for her walking away from all of this, you know? Like I said, she's going to let Clint go, but it still doesn't get rid of that anger she has. So, And killing Fisk is probably going to put an even bigger target on her back. Not unless she ends up getting mixed up in this whole, like, Valentina thing. I, 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 don't, I don't quite know what to expect from that. So, like I said, I'm, I'm, that's the thing I'm really curious about. I'm fine with it. I'm like, oh, I'm kind of bummed. I'm like, oh, that sucks if you killed him off. I was excited for him to be a part of the MCU and continue going forward. But also, it's like he had his, has had his own full arc. But like I said, it does canonize to some extent. Like, yeah, all that, some of that stuff that happened in Daredevil. So it's like, yeah, you kind of get your, um, you kind of get a little bit of everything. But like, I know people still want it more. So especially with the other things in the MCU, it's like, right, that that dynamic could have continued. But I guess it's like we've push that as far as it has in certain regard i don't know i'm curious to see i'd love to uh, just straight up like i'd love to know what you thought like, anyone that's coming across this review what did you feel about that were you upset by it are you okay with it I'm, I'm curious to see how people feel about that um but i love that the uh the larpers are like yeah like, explain that no 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 we we're we're you know we were helping out we're not the bad guys yeah we were actually we were we're working with uh we we're working with hawkeye like we're kind of his his team and everything so but um 
I love that uh, the cop, she's like sitting with Jack. It's like, oh, you were pretty good with Zor. You heard about LARPing? He's like, what's that? Is that some leisure activity? She's like, well, he's like, oh, I've got blood on my tie. So I was like, well, we haven't seen the last of Jack. The question is like, when's the next time we see him? Or he's just going to be floating about in the MCU. I was like, I was like, please don't let Jack die. He's like, oh, no, he's good. He's good. The swordsman still exists. So he's out there. Question is like, when's the next time? And under what context will we see him? Uh, but we also, at the end though, you know, Clint talking about, like, right, you know, some people just amaze you. I mean, look at what uh, Missy did with these suits. I mean, they're amazing. It's like, oh, they're, they're elastic fabric and stuff. She's like, shut up. Um, but it's like, yeah, I know what you had to go through today was a lot. But, you know, obviously it's like, you did good. I'd actually skipped over it, too. Like, he also referred, at the top of the episode, he finally referred to her as, like, you're my partner. And it's like, she was almost kind of taken back by it. Because she's always been the one to say that. But for him to finally be like, no, we are partners in this. You know, it's kind of everything she's ever wanted. So... Gets brought home to Christmas. It's like brought Lucky as well. And um, they're celebrating. You know, everyone's like, it's like, oh, Kate, come in. She's part of the family and everything. I love it. And um, Clint and Laura, and he hands her the watch. And he's like, yeah, you got to take better care of your stuff. And she's like, really? You're one to talk. And flips it over. It's a, it's a um, S.H.I.E.L.D. logo. So you're like, oh, shoot. So she was, in fact, an agent. That's what I was wondering, like, uh, I brought it up last episode, like, I'm one. maybe there was some indication there, I didn't catch it, but I'm curious, like, was she just some agent of S.H.I.E.L.D., or, like, like I said, um, I heard this from people saying that in the comics, Clint and Mockingbird have, uh, got together, not fully, but, like, also Laura exists in the comics, so, the con conversation is, are they, like, are they um, the same character? And did they mold the two characters into one in this particular um, instance? So I'm curious, are we ever going to deep dive into that or not? But um, I do that, like I said, for the most part, most things are resolved. He made it home Christmas Day, obviously burning the Ronin suit and finally getting rid of it, you know? Uh, when it's all said and done... Um, kind of letting go of his past because I think it's symbolic in more ways than one because the last time he was around Natasha he was still kind of Ronin mode to an extent so but it's also about like you know finding his way forward from the mistakes that he made and I think Kate being under his tutelage all that he was doing to take down the big guy like I think to some extent it allows him to he doesn't easily get to walk away from it it's not like oh it's all forgiven but you know he made it home at the very least he kept his promise and I love that um Kate's like oh what about Lady Arrow or um Hawkshot you know like Hotshot he's like no god no those are terrible and I look, he's like oh but what about and then it cuts to the title card of Hawkeye I'm like yeah how very befitting um but I also, um, I love our little getting to see the, at least the, the, at least that whole section of the, um, the, uh, the musical. Once again, like, I haven't actually checked. I know people are asking, like, oh, you need to put that on Spotify or something. Like, it's like, oh, it was like, it's like Agatha all along. It's like, honestly, you say what, I'm not the biggest musical person. I have kind of started getting back into more musical stuff because I've watched shows that have musical episodes and stuff. But I'm like, that is pretty damn catchy, the whole, like, I can... I could do this all day, especially it's like, oh, like that, that, um, how that's sung and everything too. It's, it's pretty catchy. So I'd be so curious, like what the entire play is like. I'm assuming it's just like the, the events of Avengers as we kind of see on stage. I'm curious, like, has any other story been adapted? Like it might be a little too soon. It might be like, oh, that's too soon to do a Thanos related one. So, but, um, I thought that was kind of a, a nice touch at the end. So at the time of me recording this, it doesn't, it's unclear whether or not there will be a season two to this. I could definitely see this being uh, a, a season two for this, especially with, you know, continuing the threads of Kate's story and just obviously like her and Clint continuing to work together. But that might be like a movie thing because I have no idea when, when the next time we'll see a lot of these characters. Like next time we will see Yelena, like I said, I'd assume like whenever Valentina or maybe US agent pop up, she might pop up. Um, so... There's a lot of that, but I also, like, I brought up earlier, like, I wonder will they touch on any of the Laura stuff about her when she was an agent of S.H.I.E.L.D. Because I, I was like, her, well, because she is retired, so I was about to say, like, I'd assume if any point that might get touched on, maybe Secret Invasion? 
maybe. But then there's also like, because some people theorize like maybe that watch had something to do with armor wards, which I thought was interesting. Still potentially could be, but it's back in her arm. So it, it was probably just something like secretly shield related. That's why I'm thinking like maybe um, Secret Invasion because Nick Fury is going to be there, you know, the whole, whole sword situation. So not unless he comes to Laura for help. Um, probably won't because like I said, she's out of the game. So... Because we know the next time we see Echo will be in her series whenever that is. But, like, um, Clint and... Clint and uh, Kate, you know, if there ends up being a season two, it's probably depend dependent on whether or not they decide they want to make a season two. I don't know. It it's definitely going to be... Because um, I, I, cause I can't think of anything that's coming up for throughout Phase 4 that would have them involved, you know? Mm. There was that, well, I did forget about the whole thing of like, yeah, that there is that, well, I'm sure that gets resolved because uh, I was about to say the whole like, oh, those, that truck that got shrunk, it's like, oh, what do we do about that? And, you know, Clinton was like, I'm gonna have to ask Scott about that. But it's like, oh, well, that got taken care of because the owl came and swooped in and took him. So I'm like, okay, it's just like, well, that's a tiny thread that's like, maybe they'll come back in some shape or form. Maybe, I, they might not, they probably won't reference it in any shape or form in like Quantum Mania, but still like, I doubt he'll pop up then anything related to Hawkeye. But yeah, I'm like, I don't know when they could pop up again next, so... It probably wouldn't be until, like, an Avengers situation comes up. I mean, Kang seems like an Avengers type of situation. That Once again, that depends on if that's resolved, but I would assume not, because not only is that already a thing for Quantumania, it's already a thing for Loki, which is already we already know is getting a season two, so... It's interesting, because so far that's the only one that's been, like, confirmed to have, like, a season two, like, everything else so far... WandaVision is the more, like, open and shut, like, that seems like a one and done. Falcon and Winter Soldier, or Captain America and Winter Soldier, that's dependent, I guess, like, you know, because we already know there is going to be a Cap 4, um, but this is open-ended enough to, like, if they wanted to, they could just end it here, but also there's still room to, like, flesh out more stuff between Clint and, um, misadventures with Kate, like, obviously keeping things street level, could interact with other street level heroes in the MCU stuff like that so I'd love to see uh if it gets a season two I'd love to see what they do with it because uh because that would give that would be my only idea of when the next time we would potentially see these characters I wouldn't know when else we'd see them like I said unless it was like a big Avengers get together not unless it's some surprise appearances here and there but um Eleanor did get locked up but I'm curious like is that the last we've seen of her um, once again, the fist situation, is it as open shut as it seems like it is, or is there more to it? I, I feel like it's open and shut, but we'll have to wait and see, though. Um, I'm curious to see uh, what happens next, because I believe Miss Marvel's the next show in the lineup. Once again, I haven't... It's been a little while since I saw the lineup, but I want to say that's the next show um, set up to come out next year, so... But uh, really, that's all I want to talk about. Until the next time we meet, be happy, be safe, live life to the fullest, and enjoy it. Good day, and goodbye.